Hello, and welcome to Specification Automation for IP and SOC Design, Verification, Firmware, Validation, and Documentation. For Agnesis, I'm Tom Anderson. There are many challenges in the development of today's complex SOCs. For a start, well, there's the complexity. Today's system on chip designs may have billions of gates and thousands of blocks and countless interactions among those blocks. In fact, individual blocks can also be very complex. After all, yesterday's chip is today's IP block. No one can design billions of gates from scratch, and so reuse has to be part of the picture. That may mean reuse with industry standards, including IP from commercial providers. Reuse within a company across project teams, design and verification IP, or reuse among partners, different companies working on a similar project. And across levels, from block to subsystem to SOC. Of course, every SOC has some novel RTL, generally coded by hand. And anytime the designers manually code RTL, there's a chance of introducing errors. And of course, it consumes time and resources. So the goal is to make the process as automated as possible and to reuse IP as much as possible. When one thinks about developing a system on chip, which by definition has one or more embedded processors, there are additional challenges that come into play. For a start, there are multiple teams involved. There's the architecture team, which is responsible for defining the high-end algorithms and partitioning the design between hardware and software. The hardware portion, the RTL, is designed by the hardware design team and verified by the hardware verification team. The software portion, the code that runs on the embedded processors, are developed by the firmware team, one could call it firmware, drivers, microcode. There are different terms people use, but this is the software that is very close to the hardware and runs on the embedded processors. Finally, the complete system, that's hardware and software together, must be validated by the validation team. This surely happens in the bring-up lab once the chip is back from the foundry, but ideally it happens pre-silicon as well. Just plugging together all these blocks into the top-level SOC is a very complex problem. All these blocks must be connected properly, and there are hundreds of thousands of signals, maybe even millions of signals, that also must be connected together properly for the design to work at the full chip level. When one thinks about writing a specification for an SOC, there are additional challenges that come into play. There really is no effective way to capture specifications in a traditional design process. People generally write their specifications in natural language, such as English, but that's inherently imprecise and sometimes completely ambiguous. There are some formalisms, different formats and file formats and coding styles defined for describing different portions of the specification, but they're generally not commonly used across teams. And in most cases, they stand alone. They're not really part of the design process. Even if one had a perfect specification, you face the waterfall problem, which is that specification changes many, many times throughout the project. At any time, there are changes in the specification. There are ramifications for the design. The hardware changes, the software may change too, and then the combined chip must be re-verified, re-validated, and re-documented. What the teams really need is a shared specification format, a single format that can be shared across all the teams on the project, and for that specification format to be executable. That is to say, you can actually generate the relevant files directly from the specification. And that's where Agnesis comes in. That's what we provide, SOC specification automation. Let's describe the steps that we have available today. We really started the company using register memory specifications that were executable and could be used to generate automatically the design code for those registers and memories, formal properties to verify them in formal verification tools, the models and sequences used in simulation UVM test benches, the driver code, written by the embedded team in order to manipulate those registers and memories, and then documentation to be shared across the project team. We next introduced the ability to specify custom sequences, for example, for novel register designs or other portions of your design. You can describe a sequence. We can generate formal properties to check those, that sequence. We can generate the sequences that run in the test bench, as well as the sequences that are included in the C++, C++ code. And again, appropriate documentation. Next, we introduced a library of standard IP blocks. And from these libraries, we can generate anything, the design code, 
the files necessary for formal and simulation verification, the driver code, and documentation. And most recently, we allow you to specify the top level chip, chip hookup requirements for your SOC. So you can tell us how all the blocks are interconnected. From that, we will generate the RTL design code for the top level of the SOC and appropriate documentation, plus formal properties to verify the connections. And by the way, that doesn't just work for our library and our blocks, it applies to your custom blocks as well. Now, who benefits from this automation? Well, the RTL design code, of course, is used by the RTL designers as part of their overall chip design. And mind you, every module that we generate is one less module as RTL designers have to write manually. And so it reduces risk on the project and saves time and resources. Of course, the verification team must uh, verify the entire RTL design. So they also receive the generated files. Formal properties are run in formal verification tools. Some projects might have the RTL designers involved in this. Sometimes it might be a dedicated formal verification team. Either way, they benefit from the automatically generated properties. The verification team for sure owns the SOC top level test bench compliant with the UVM standard. And so they use the generated models and sequences. The C++ driver code it's used by the embedded programmers as a good starting point for their embedded software. We generate header files, we generate sequences, we generate code that is used directly in the uh, files generated by the embedded programmers. The lab bring up team, of course, runs the embedded code when they have the chip back from the foundry and are running tests and validating in the bring up lab. But as I said earlier, pre silicon ver verification is also very desirable. And so the verification team may also run this code in embedded processor models and simulation. And finally, the documentation, of course, is shared by all team members on the project. It's a way of keeping everyone in sync with the latest version of the design. And by the way, the documentation that we can generate is high enough quality that quite often technical writers will use it as the basis for the end user documentation, such as user manuals. Here are the products that we provide that implement the flow we showed on the previous slide. Agnes just began with iDesign Spec, our flagship product. That provides the register and memory model automation. We now have IDS NextGen, which provides a very sophisticated specification editor and also serves as a front end to our complete flow. On the verification side, SPECTA AV and ARV generate the test fence and tests for a simulation environment. iSequence Spec, ISS, allows you to define your custom sequences. SLIPG is a customizable IP library containing a bunch of titles that are relevant standards for many different customers and many different applications. SOC Enterprise is the tool that allows you to specify the top level hookup for your SOC and have us automatically connect everything together. And finally, we have DD Insight, which is a smart editor for the system for and UV code that uh, inevitably people will write as part of the design and verification process. There's something new to talk about. In fact, there are a couple of things new to talk about. We've introduced recently IDS FPGA, which is a version of iDesign spec tailored for FPGA designers. And specifically what that means is we have integrated with Xilinx Vivado and Intel Cordis Prime FPGA environments so that people are operating in their usual environment, their usual tool suite, but taking advantage of our automation. We've expanded the titles available in the Slip G library. You can see the list currently available here. It grows all the time. And of course we, are very happy to have additional suggestions from our customers. And finally, a new technology that's really quite clever and interesting, I believe. It's iSpec.ai. It's an artificial intelligence machine learning driven application. What it does is take English descriptions of design intent or assertions and convert them into system Verilog assertions, SVA. By the way, you could also put in existing SVA assertions and convert them into English descriptions. Why is this interesting? Well, as we said earlier, English is somewhat imprecise. Uh, this is a particular domain where we think that with the artificial intelligence and machine learning and, and crowdsourcing to learn the way that people write their assertions and specify their assertions, we can actually do a very good job of converting English assertions into SVA. Now, we're relying on everybody to try this and, and help us get it right. So you can go to the website, iSpec.ai, and try it yourself. Type in an English description of something that you want to say about your design and watch the SVA we generate. If maybe you inherited a block that has some assertions that you didn't write yourself and want to understand why, enter those and we will generate an English description to help you understand that design. Again, this is crowdsourcing. We want to get feedback from lots and lots of users 
I strongly encourage you to try it. A bit about Agnesis, the company. We are the leader in this space, specification automation for both IPs and SOCs. We were formed in 2007, so this will be our 15th anniversary year. We're privately held and profitable. We're headquartered in Boston, and we have applications engineers worldwide. Of course, we have a worldwide customer base, and so it's important to support customers in their own time zones. We're well known for our customer support, as a matter of fact. We have more than 1,000 hands-on users of our products worldwide. We have more than 50 customer companies, and we're able to provide response time within hours to this, these users because of our distributed team. So allow me to summarize. It's no secret that SOC development is incredibly complex and it's certainly not getting any easier. Frequent spec changes make the problem even harder. It's not a one-time problem. Every time the spec changes, you have to go back and make modifications to your design code, verification code, your software, your documentation. It's a huge task that's repeated many times over the course of the project. The only solution is automation, being able to generate hardware design, Drivers and firmware, verification code, validation code, and documentation, all from executable specifications. And that's what we do. We save valuable time and project resources, not just once at the beginning of the project, but every time the specification changes. To learn more, I invite you to visit our website, www.agnesis.com. Thank you for listening.